Alright guys, this is The Immortal Life of Henry Athalas by Rebecca Sklude. This is part 2 of chapter 17. Yeah, so this will be a shorter chapter, it's just that my throat was getting very dry. You know, so here we go. Up from here. Okay, chapter 17, page 133. Okay? They said the Nuremberg Code didn't seem to apply in the United States, and that there were no laws protecting research subjects. Science Magazine called it the hottest public debate on medical ethics since the Nuremberg Trials. And it said, The situation at present appears rather perilous for everyone. A reporter from Science asked Southam why, if the injections were as safe as he swore they were, he didn't inject himself. Let's face it, Southam responded. The relatively few skilled cancer researchers? It seems stupid to take even the little risk. Patients who unknowingly been injected with cancer cells by Southam read the articles and began contacting reporters. New York State Attorney General Louis Lefkowitz learned how Southam researched through the media as well and immediately launched his own investigation. In a scathing five-page document filled with exclamation points, he accused Southam and Mendel of fraud and unprofessional conduct and demanded that the Board of Regents of the University of the State of New York revoke their medical licenses. Lefkowitz wrote, Every human being has an inalienable right to determine what shall be done with his own body. These patients had the right to know the contents of the syringe, and if this knowledge was to cause fear and anxiety or make them frightened, they had a right to be fearful and frightened and thus say no to the experiment. Many doctors testified before the Board of Regents and in the media on Southham, Southam's behalf, saying they had been conducting similar research for decades. They argued that it was an unnecessary to disclose all information to research subjects or get consent in all cases, and that Southam's behavior was considered ethical in the field. Southam's lawyers argued, if the whole profession is doing it, how can you tell it, call it unprofessional conduct? This rattled the Board of Regents. On June 10th of 1965, its Medical Grievance Committee found Southam and Mendel guilty of fraud or deceit and unprofessional conduct in the practice of medicine and recommended that their medical license be suspended for one year. The board wrote, There is evidence in the record in this proceeding an attitude on the part of some physicians that they can go ahead and do anything, and that the patient's consent is an empty formality. With this, we cannot agree. The decision called for more specific guidelines in clinical research, saying we trust that this measure of discipline will serve as a stern warning that zeal for research must not be carried to the point where it violates the basic rights and immunities of a human person. The suspension of Southam's and Mendel's licenses were stayed, leaving them both in one-year probation instead, and the case seemed to have little impact on Southam's professional standing. Soon after the end of his probationary period, Southam was elected president of the American Association for Cancer Research. But his case brought about one of the largest research oversight changes in the history of experimentation on humans. Before the Board of Regents announced his decision, the negative press about Southam's work had gotten the attention of the NIH, which funded his research and required its investigators to get consent for all studies involving humans. In response to the Southern situation, 
the INIH investigated all their grantee situations and found that only 9 out of 52 had any policy in place to protect the rights of research subjects. Only 16 used consent forms. The NIH concluded, in the setting in which the patient is involved in an experimental effort, the judgment of the investigator is not sufficient as a basis for reaching a conclusion concerning the ethical and the moral set of questions in that relationship. As a result of this investigation, the NIH said that to qualify for funding, all proposals for research on human subjects have to be approved by review boards independent bodies made up of professionals and lay people of diverse races, classes and backgrounds to ensure that they met the NIH ethics requirement, including detailed informed consent. Scientists said medical research was doomed. In a letter to the editor of Science, one of them warned, when we are prevented from attempting simulating innocuous studies of cancer behavior in humans, we may mark 1966 as the year in which all medical progress ceased. Later that year, a Harvard anesthesiologist named Henry Beecher published a study in the New England Journal of Medicine showing that Southam's research was only one of hundreds of similarly unethical studies. Beecher published a detailed list of the 22 worst offenders, including researchers who had injected children with hepatitis and others who had poisoned patients under anesthesia using carbon dioxide. Southam's study was included as example number 17. Despite scientists' fears, the ethical crackdown didn't slow scientific progress. In fact, research flourished, and much of it involved Hela. This is the end of chapter 17.